In a certain running event, preliminary heats are determined by a random draw, so it would be expected that the abilities of runners in the various heats are about the same on average. The accompanying table shows the times, in seconds, for preliminary heats 2 and 5 in a particular year. Is there any evidence that the mean time to finish is different for randomized heats? Explain. Be sure to include a discussion of assumptions and conditions for the analysis. Right here by clicking this, we can get to the table showing us the data. You'll notice we have country, name of runner, heat, and time. For this problem, we are primarily concerned about the heat and the time. Now let's go ahead and take this data and bring it into Jump. We need to click right here on this icon and then go to Copy to Clipboard. On Copy to Clipboard, go ahead and change it to Tab Deliminated. Now, if you're using a PC, click Control c If you're using a Mac, click Command-C, and then click Done. You now have the data copied, but now we have to put it into Jump. It's very important when you're in a new data sheet, you do not click inside of it. To get to a new data sheet in Jump, click anywhere and go to File, New, Data Table. Now, with the new data table open, do not click inside of it, and go to Edit, paste with column names. Now it's very important you paste with column names. If you did not paste with column names, you will actually just paste with the first row being the names of the column heads. Start over and start with a brand new sheet and paste with column names. Once again, start over if you make any mistake and paste with column names. You should have something that looks just like this. Now we're gonna make one change here. We're gonna take heat and turn it into a nominal variable. And we will now right click on the top of heat and go to column properties and then go to value ordering. We will either right click or two finger click on a Mac to get the settings of this column. When you get to value ordering, make sure to click on five and go to move up. You can then hit apply and then okay. This will change the order and have it so the order in our problem is the same for the order in the question. Now, let's go ahead and check the conditions. We need to make two histograms to check the nearly normal condition for this data. We will go to Analyze and then to Distributions to get the histograms. Let's go ahead and do By Heat and then click on Time and Analyze Time. Go ahead and click OK. We have our stacked histograms here, displayed properly with count axes and also uniform scaling. Now, we don't need to do that, but it just helps with looking at the data. If you'll notice, the data does have an outlier for heat two. This person was a lot slower than all the other runners. So we are going to fail to meet the nearly normal condition. Normally distributed data should not have someone this far away. They are definitely an outlier. So let's go back and check our assumptions. The independent groups would mean that heat two and heat five are independent of each other. That seems safe to assume. The randomization condition means that we need to randomly select runners for each group and the problem states that they are randomly put into each heat. The nearly normal condition means that we have data that is nearly normal and that is violated. So we have one condition that is violated right here. Now an important step that you need to do right here is we need to remove an outlier. The outlier that we saw can be removed very easily by going back to the jump data and clicking on the point or capturing it like this. Make sure you have selected the point and then we need to go to rows and then hide and exclude. Now you'll notice the point has been removed but the analysis has not changed. And that's all right, but this analysis no longer goes with it. But when we do new analysis, it will not have that point in there. So now let's write the null and alternative for this problem. In this problem, we are trying to see whether there is a difference between the true mean of heat two and heat five. So the null would be that there is no difference between the true means of these heats. The alternative would be that there is a difference. So let's start out here by saying the true difference between mean two and mean five is equal to zero. And then if we were to take the true mean of two minus the true mean of five, we would not get zero. So this states that there is no difference. This states that there is a difference. Once again, this problem gives no preference to whether heat two is faster than heat five, which would be 
this one right here or this one right here, which are the one-sided alternatives. This problem clearly states we are doing a two-sided alternative. Next, we need to determine the test statistic. And now the test statistic is found by taking the difference and standardizing it. It would be hard to do by hand for this problem because we'd have to figure out the means, the standard deviations, and the sample sizes, and then run all the statistics by hand and get the degrees of freedom. Let's go back and use jump to get this. You'll notice in our jump data sheet that this point right here has now been hidden and excluded. The shades mean hidden and the cross means excluded. So now we will not be using this point in our analysis, which is what we want because it's an outlier. Removing this point allows us to meet the nearly normal condition to do a two sample t-test of independent means. Now let's go to analyze and go to fit y by x. Under analyze fit y by x, we want to see if heat can explain somebody's time. The x variable is the one that will go on the x axis and the time variable will be on the y axis. So let's see right here, our data. We can click back inside, which makes all the points come back and bright and to life. Now let's go ahead and run our two sample t-test. Go to the red arrow right here and click on t-test. Here is our output for the two sample t-test. We have the difference and the standard error of the difference. This is from your equation where you simply take the difference between the two sample means and then standardize it by the standard error of the difference. If you divide negative 0.37 over 0.39, you will get negative 0.9355. Now it's important to mention that my output looks like two minus five because I did value ordering on heat. If you see five minus two, that means your difference is actually going to be the negative of what you have because you're doing it in the opposite way. My difference is negative right here, meaning that heat five had a higher time than heat two. Think about it for a second. If you were to take imaginary numbers, 10 minus 15, that would turn out negative, meaning 15 is greater. If this second one is bigger, the difference is negative. If I had done this the opposite way, I would have had five minus two, and this would have been a positive difference right here. Remember, this is heat two minus heat five. It's not the actual two minus five. That's not a math equation there that is saying mean for group two minus mean for group five. Now, with this different standardized, we get the T-ratio right here. So the T-ratio is negative 0.94 rounded to two decimal places. Now we have to determine the P-value. Remember, this P-value is for the two-sided test. Going here to these results, you'll notice that we are about one standard error above. But with this in mind, this is not a normal curve. This is a T-curve with 10.24 degrees of freedom. With 10.24 degrees of freedom, the T is pressed down and there's more area under the curve. Going by our 6895 99.7 rule, we would not get the right answer here. This is a T-curve and is different than the normal curve. Very important to note that right here. So the area I am looking for is actually this light blue and the dark blue total, because this is the probability of results as extreme as my observed results. If you notice right here where this line would be, that's results as extreme or more extreme. The dark blue is lower than a value, just as low as my observed results. And then right here, we have the reflection on the positive side of a test statistic just as great in positive magnitude away, and then results more extreme. So the probability of getting results as extreme or more extreme than my observed results due to random chance variation, given that the null is true, that the true difference is zero. And that is the p-value we have for the does not equal test right here. Here's the less than test, the greater than test, and the does not equals test. Finally, we need to make a conclusion on whether or not there is evidence to support the claim that the mean of running times in heat two and heat five are different. Now remember, when we look at our results, we wanted to test to see if there was a difference. The null was that there is no difference. Our p-value here is high. 
so we will retain the null. You could reject the null at certain points. Usually the 0.05 standard is what is assumed. When the p-value is below 0.05, we would have evidence to reject the null. And I want you to just think for a second. This line right here, if I were to move it further over, the p-value would get smaller. You'll notice it would make this dark blue area smaller and the reflection of the light blue would also get smaller if I move it over, meaning that the t-ratio is bigger, making the p-value smaller. As the t-ratio gets bigger, p-values get smaller. At least two of them will. The does not equals and the less than would get smaller here and the greater than would get bigger because you would not have evidence for greater than if you landed below zero. So now we have one more thing that coincides with this output. We have the confidence interval. You'll notice my confidence interval is negative and then positive. My confidence interval contains zero, which means that zero could be the true difference between these two means. Zero is contained in the interval because when we ran our hypothesis test, we did not reject zero at the 0.05 level. A 95% confidence interval will correspond in results to a does not equals test with one minus the confidence level of the interval for the alpha. So just for the example here, one minus 0.95 means we would get the same results at the 0.05 level. Zero is in my interval here, and I cannot reject at the 0.05 level. We have coinciding results. So let's go ahead and answer the question. I do not reject the null, which is fail to reject the null. There is not evidence, and these are the only two statements that can go together. I do not reject the null. There is not evidence to support the alternative. The alternative states that the running times for heat two and heat five are different. If we had rejected the null, we would have evidence for the alternative. Once again, you can only fail to reject the null and not have evidence for the alternative, or you can reject the null because you have evidence for the alternative.